last leg of a uh, six city, um, five country tour in Asia. Um, I wish I could tell you uh, what I've been doing here um, in Asia. It would probably uh, trump the talk I'm about to give. Um, but I'm going to try to refer locally to it because I think that there are many changes of foot. Um, and Asia in general, uh, China in particular, uh, is playing a leading role in our market. And, um, and we believe uh, the mission of our firm is to uh, play a leading role as a global investor to facilitate the growth and the success uh, of this, this great industry. Um, I want to talk about the title, first of all, accessing RMB. Uh, RMB, of course, is a currency, um, and it opens up a market uh, that is unique in its opportunities and challenges. Uh, China is a country, and um, in another five to ten years, somewhere in that time frame, uh, China will overtake the U.S. as being the world's uh, leading economy. Uh, by the time we get there, um, the, the, this fight will be irrelevant. Uh, the RMB needs to become uh, convertible fully in order to, for China to achieve its ambition uh, to being the world's uh, leading economy. And so we're right now in a transitional stage. That transitional stage mirrors the stage that we're in, in clean tech. Um, a lot of people use the term clean tech because they have a technology focus, a venture focus, and that's a very important focus to have. Uh, the roots of the firm are in energy, and ultimately, we believe uh, that this is all part of a global energy market. And the rules of the energy market um, are very different uh, than technology itself. And so what we look to do is, is to help companies transition in the process of becoming energy companies. Uh, and then that is a very important role. And so this title is interesting because, in essence, the entire title is a bit of an illusion. Um, accessing r and is transitional. Uh, clean tech is transitional. It's just, a, it is a, a, a thought about the, this industry, but as I talked to, and actually over the last 10 days, have talked to leaders of this industry throughout Asia, meeting with some of the, the leading CEOs uh, in Asia, it's very clear to everyone that no matter what part of the clean tech space you're in, virtually, that's with a few exceptions, you're actually in the energy business. just to keep you awake. Uh, so we are a global firm, uh, and um, we decided a couple of years ago, actually uh, the thought occurred to me after joining President Obama in November 2009 in his trip to uh, China and meeting um, the first time with a group of uh, dynamic leaders in China that, um, that in order for Hudson to you know, realize its ambition, of, uh, of being uh, a global uh, PE firm uh, in the space that we actually had to be, we had a presence in the world's leading market in, in clean energy, and that is China. And so we were able, uh, through great fortune and my overwhelming powers of persuasion, to, uh, to convince uh, one of China's leading energy executives to join us. And he couldn't be with us uh, today as a business pressing in China, but uh, that's uh, Zhang Shen. And he's got a great background. And so um, uh, more important than uh, getting uh, my business card if you want to connect to us in China is, is uh, um, I'll lead you to Trump in because he is a, he's a tremendous leader. And he's leading a, a team which is actually now five, but this is already out of date, uh, in the Beijing office. And, uh, and so we are already expanding and look to play a very important role in the sector. Now, just a little bit more background about us. This is the advertising portion. I do want to get to the to the meet and talk to you about our philosophy on that, that accessing capital and deal flow and what will we play. So we have, uh, we have a global portfolio in wind, uh, in solar, in hydro, in energy smart technologies, and in waste energy with our, our newest investment um, in, uh, in a company that is a headquartered in Beijing. Um, and so that, that provides a, a, a tremendous, um, diverse portfolio in which we have to uh, un unlock value uh, for our investors uh, around the world. And we have to go through a very rigorous screening process. Uh, a 
over the last several years, over 2,600, uh, getting close to 2,700 uh, investment opportunities. Uh, it takes a very experienced team to be able to whittle that down uh, to just 10. And so um, we are very fortunate to, uh, to have the opportunity to screen all those investments. And we learn a lot from that. And we want to bring that knowledge that comes not just from the 10 investments we've made and not from just the decades of experience in the sector and in the energy business, um, but also what we learn from really in watching um, you know, 2,000 companies uh, in this space uh, grow sometimes flourish and, and sometimes not. And so we believe that we have a very important uh, role to play as a thought partner, as a strategic partner for companies around the world and in particular in China. In this transition where China is really playing an increasingly important leadership role in this sector uh, and, and that mirrors China's growth to being uh, the world's leading economy, um, Chinese companies need to access outside perspectives on how to grow beyond their borders. Companies that are only serving the domestic market, that's their only intention, may or may not feel that there's value in, attack, in attaching themselves to us or us attaching uh, ourselves to them. But for a lot of them, they have global ambition. And figuring the way out to the market is extraordinarily challenging. There are thousands and thousands of companies that are vying for shelf space around the world um, in our market, and they lack strategic depth. Their management teams are outstanding at discrete skill sets, but they don't have the full skill set to take them and realize their ambition. So we're there as a thought partner, as a capital partner, in order to help them get there. And our brand and our network uh, is certainly, uh, we believe, uh, qualifies as well to be uh, an investor of choice. What we're also trying to do is, is achieve some goals of the Chinese government, but from our perspective, and also, by the way, from governments around the world, uh, facilitating knowledge and technology transfer uh, into China and ultimately uh, from China outside. Um, that is perhaps uh, the most interesting two points that I'm going to make today. Um, when I came here, Right. When I came to China with the, uh, with the president, it was all about strategic relationships. I don't know who's read the news, but um, that is becoming extremely difficult in a politically charged environment in which making this happen is no easy feat. Um, there are no rights and wrongs here. I'm not here to, to throw stones at, at any government. Um, but it takes actually business leaders that want to get business done and want to employ people and to grow the world's economy, that actually need to have a voice. And so we're one voice in, um, among many. Uh, but we're trying to promote trip and uh, promote technology transfer. <coughs> well, frankly, others in both governments are sometimes um, after an agenda that is not necessarily consistent with ours or the better interests of their own governments. And so this is, this is really tough. Um, but we do think that it's worth the fight because this is the only way uh, that this industry survives and thrives, and it's the only way the global economy grows. Uh, we look to provide expert strategic advice to companies seeking the IPO. Uh, my co-managing partner, John Cavalier, was one of the most celebrated bankers uh, in the industry, has taken in his, in his time more Chinese companies public uh, than any uh, banker on, on Wall Street. And so very, uh, very important strategic advice for companies that are trying to figure out a way to market. Now, again, in the R&D market, uh, those companies may have limited ambition only to be um, in the Asia market, but many of those actually look to transition ultimately for Hong Kong or global, other global listings. And then looking for joint venture uh, opportunities. We're negotiating an investment right now that I, you know, I'm sorry I can't talk about, but, uh, but it is a tremendous, uh, a, a very advanced uh, Chinese company uh, in the energy smart technology space that is looking for uh, the global partnerships in order to advance um, from their domestic market. They have a very strong share uh, globally, and they need a thought partner and a strategic partner. And so that's uh, that's how we're positioning ourselves. Um, in terms of our connectivity in the renewable power sector, again, I, I can skip through this. Um, we've been here for a long time, even before we we, we sunk roots uh, in the Asian region, and uh, we, we intend on staying here. Um, I have to be wearing the same suit today. I didn't realize that when I got up. Um, this, is a, this is a picture I actually taken uh, last year um, with the then mayor and, uh, and now party secretary 
um, uh, she, uh, Yang Zhou. Yang Zhou is, uh, as many of you may know, is the uh, uh, imperial uh, uh, summer home of the emperors in China. And it's a beautiful city with very rich culture and, and a commitment to sustainability. And uh, uh, Secretary Xi is interesting. He studied um, in, the, in the University of Maryland um, and has got it in Asian style um, and sought us out to, uh, to be a strategic partner to help them uh, on the investment side. Uh, and so it's a very warm relationship and it is our, our access point uh, into the R&D market. What it's all about for, for private equity is you've got to get the, the investment right and make the right selections. But unless you're adding value, um, uh, you're just a, a pile of cash. And so uh, these are the, uh, the uh, uh, access points or the, the value levers that we look, uh, that we focus on in adding value. Uh, a couple of them are particularly important uh, in the R&D market, pretty high quality management. And we're not going to excel in getting best in class managers, even though Jean Michel has great access. You're going to look for other partners that are probably going to be uh, deeper there. Acquisitions, licenses, and investiture very strong M&A background, operations and organic growth. Uh, Jean Min has been an energy executive for 17 years, ran a number of leading energy companies at the most senior levels uh, uh, in China and, um, and also outside for a while. So has a, a tremendous operating background. And our industry network, I think, is second to none. And that is uh, very, very important to a lot of uh, R&D-based uh, companies, companies that are still operating in only, only in R&D. And then financing solutions, um, we can certainly add value, but particularly when they go global. Uh, I don't think I need to stay on this slide here. Um, uh, and I think these are some slides will go to the, to the next one here. You all know how big this sector has gotten. Uh, and uh, it, will, it will struggle for a while. We are in a transitional phase um, into what we call sustainable markets. Um, and our focus on sustainable markets is really important because uh, there's a lot of value bleed happening uh, in our market. Um, I've been talking to uh, industry executives around Asia uh, this week about what's been happening in the solar markets. Um, at the peak of uh, the bubble uh, in, in solar, the industry had a market cap of close to $200 billion. And today, that same market cap is $25 billion, it's one eighth. But the market is seven to eight times larger. Um, not quite as, as dramatic but similar in wind. Uh, and part of this is, I think, and this is an important point to make about China's role, is that we need to do two things. We need to focus on the cost structure of the industry, and we also need to understand better the business model. The business model for a long time was tariff chasing, running after government budgets. That is not a sustainable strategy companies are figuring that out. So figuring out um, how to sell energy and its related services is really important, and that is a major focus of our firm around the world in our portfolio today and, our, and in our portfolio of the future. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to identify companies with very low or no technology risk. And so I'm here at Intech um, a conference, and of course technology plays an important role, by the time we get in, and you, you mentioned this here, what we want to do is be a partner with VC firms to take those companies that have achieved a level of technology maturity, but are now looking to go to the next level and participate in a regional or a global market where we can be of help, not just as capital providers, but again, as thought partners. And so the most important thing today about a company and its prospects for success is not technology, it's business model. And that's where we look to focus and help the great uh, venture capitalists and other investors, um, industrial companies as well, that have got really interesting exciting companies and help them with their business models so that they can be the most successful companies in the future. And ultimately, it's all about making money. And in highly competitive markets in the energy industry, what's happening in solar wind today, that's not new. Uh, many of you are not in the natural gas industry, but in the if you're in the, in the, in the natural gas industry in the U.S., E&P companies are being crushed by intense competition, by the volatility of supply and demand, the dynamics that have been um, a, a, an important feature in energy markets for 150 years. And so we understand it because of our roots, 
and we look to be very practical in the way that we, we make ourselves available and give strategic advice as investors in how to ensure uh, sustainable margins. In terms of where we're focusing on, um, this is probably better read as a deal sheet um, than long-term strategic thinking. Um, we see a lot of deal flow uh, in China and, and around the region, and so it's just a sampling of um, some of the uh, companies with the, the technology types, the industry sectors that we think are, are very useful um, and, uh, and helpful to invest in where we can have protected margins and invest for a two to five year cycle and then generate an attractive return. Um, our first investment in China was in a company called Global State Environment. Um, it operates the largest uh, waste energy plant uh, in Asia, um, located on the outskirts of Beijing. Uh, tremendous management team, and um, uh, MBK is our, is our senior partner in that deal, of course, and uh, as another, as a minority investor. And so this was uh, getting our toes, uh, dipping our toes into the, into the Chinese waters um, for our first investment. And we are very excited about it. Uh, again, great management team, and we like the business model what we like about it is its relative stability um, because of the long uh, contracts that form the, the crux of this company. And so um, what's also interesting about this sector is that it's a highly fragmented sector. I think, if I recall correctly, that there's no company that has more than a 4% market share in the waste energy market uh, in China. So there's great opportunity uh, for acquisitions as well in this company. And it has 11 projects that are very stable, you can see, the very long concession periods, which provide stability to the cash flow um, of this company and make it a very solid, secure investment um, for our initial investment in China. It, it probably won't get any more stable than this, and so we'll need to, uh, to change risk and reward it as we go forward, but uh, we do have uh, an orientation here that we like to de-risk our investments of any sort. I think many of you probably know um, how the waste energy business works. Uh, waste, this company is into waste energy, water, and waste water. And so this is our first foray where we focus on waste energy because it's over 50% of the company's portfolio. But it provides a springboard for us um, as our own investment philosophy matures to get a little bit beyond um, energy to other uh, important scarce resources. And as you know, water is China's scarcest resource. So that ends my presentation.